Good morning, Grade Threes, and a warm welcome back to WorksheetCloud.com. Lessons are presented here live or recorded for you on a daily basis. So it's lovely to be with you again after a quiet but chocolate yummy weekend for the Easter weekend recently. Um, I trust you and your family are all well and that you are going to keep busy with some of the lessons that we're going to do. So let's get on with it. A warm welcome uh, once again. It's your maths lesson for the day. And just a reminder, uh, grade threes, that if you have any questions you need to ask me, just email me on the grade three email address below on your screen. And I'll get back to you as soon as I can with any answers I might have regarding this particular lesson. So today we are going to be looking at multiplication tables. And do I hear some groans and, oh no, Mrs. H, do we have to do this? I hate learning my tables. I can't memorize them. I can't remember them. And it's so boring. Well, yes, I agree with all of that. It is boring. But something very important about multiplication tables is that you use these all, all the time, every day. And the, the quicker you get to know them and be able to answer them very quickly, the better it'll be all around, especially when you're doing calculations as you move on higher up in the school. So I try and make my multiplication lessons fun and exciting for my classes. Um, quite a few of the activities I do with them, sadly I can't share here, but I can share some of the stuff that we do just to make life easier for you guys so that you can learn your tables while you're staying at home. What will you actually learn today? Well, there's quite an emphasis on patterns in multiplication tables, so you'll notice that there are patterns in all of them. You will find out how many multiplications you already know, and how many multiplication tables you still might need to learn, and then I'm going to emphasize patterns, patterns, patterns. To begin with, I'd like to look at the naught times table. And you're probably saying to me, I've never seen the naught times table. Well, yes, you haven't because you've never had to learn them because you know from what the pattern is here that if we multiply any number whatsoever by naught or zero, the answer will always be naught. So you don't have to learn these. You just learn the rule and you just apply it. So the naught times table, we can tick that box. We know exactly what's going on. Let's look at the one times table. And again, you're going to say, we don't do the one times table. Yes, you do actually. You just do it automatically. If you multiply any number by one, the number or the answer remains the same. So there's your pattern. One times naught is naught. One times one is one. One times two is two. And so on, right? So we get to one times 12 or one times a million is a million. So do we need to learn our one times table? Nope. We can tick that box as well. That's good news. What about a 10 times table? That's another one that's got a fabulous pattern if you look at it. Any number multiplied by 10, what's the rule, guys? That number gains a naught. We say it gains a naught or it gets a naught. We don't say you add a naught because if you add a naught to any number, the number stays the same. So you must use the correct wording there. 10 times 1 is 10 times 2 is 20, and 30, and 40. So each time we are making our number 10 times bigger. There again, you know the rule. You don't need to learn your 10 times table because you know the rule and the pattern. And so we can tick that box as well. Let's look at the 11 times table. There's also a pattern here. If you notice the answers right up to 99, if you multiply any number by 11 up to 99, that number just doubles. So 11 times 1 is 11, times 2, 22, times 3, 33, times 4, 44. So to summarize, multiplying by naught, 1, 10 times, and 11, this is pretty much what we have discovered. If you multiply any number by naught, it 
answer is naught. For instance, naught times 2 is naught. If you multiply any number by 1, the answer stays the same. 1 times 2 is 2. Multiplying any number by 10, that number gains a 0. 10 times 2 is 20. And if you multiply most numbers by 11, the number just repeats itself. For example, 11 times 2 is 22. Let's test our tables knowledge to see how many tables we already know. Right, we're going to look at a multiplication table here, or uh, what do you call a, um, well, I suppose it's a multiplication table, showing all our multiplication tables from 1 to 12. It's a grid, in other words, a number grid. I want you to take note, everybody, that there are answers for the one times table can be found on this top row, and the answers for the one times table can be found on this first column. The answers for the two times table is in the second row, as well as the second column. So the answers are duplicated on this grid, or multiplication table grid. And so we are going to start crossing out all the tables that we are duplicated, all the tables that we know. So let's go about doing that now. Right, so let's cross out our one times table. We know those because we know the pattern and we know the rule. We're going to cross both those out, the row and the column. Let's cross out our ten times table because we know the rule for that. We don't have to learn these. So what am I doing actually is I'm crossing out or deleting all the tables that I know the answers to. So we've done one times table and a ten times table. Now I'm going to cross out the eleven times table up to ninety-nine or one hundred and ten because we know those as well. Then we're going to start crossing out two times table on this row that is duplicated. So 2 times 2 is 4, and now I'm going to cross out these answers because they are here. We don't need them to be written twice on this grid, do we? Nope. Right, so that was 2 times table. Let's do the same with 3 times table. 3 times 3 is 9, but we're going to cross out these ones here because the answers for the 3 times table are in this column. So we're going to delete the rows or cross out the rows of answers. And we're going to do the same with 4 times table. 4 times 4 is 16, but from there on, all those are duplicated in the column. 5 times table, 5 times 5 is 25. From 30 onwards, we cross out. 6 times table, from 42 onwards, we cross out. 7 times table, from 56 onwards. 8 times table, from 72 and the 9 times table. I'm not going to cross out the 12. Oh yes, I actually am. I am going to cross out 108 because it's, it's down here as well. Right, and now we, we forgot to do this 11 times one, guys. So we're going to cross that out up to there, 11 times 11 and 11 times 12 over here, we're going to include because we need to learn those. So all in all, we've crossed out quite a lot. Um, and let me show you when I go back into the PowerPoint, the new grid that I would have given to you. Right, and you will be amazed at just how how much you actually know. And there we have a new grid. Everything that's in orange has been deleted and it's only the tables that you can see in blue that you'd need to learn. And of course what you would do eventually oh dear, bouncing around all over the place 
what you would do is that as you know your tables, let's, for argument's sake, if you printed this out and you put it on your wall in your, in your, in your kitchen or in your bedroom and you thought to yourself, but I know two times two is four. So I'm going to cross that out. And I know, in fact, I know all my two times tables. So I can cross that out, which means I only have to learn these ones. So do you get the, get the idea, guys? We, we are now, makes it much easier, doesn't it? It's not such a big burden to learn all those tables. Already we're feeling a little bit more lighthearted. Now, my favorite table is nine times table because it's got such interesting patterns. Let's take a look at this. Nine times nine, the answer is nine. 2 times 9, the answer is 18. 3 times 9, the answer is 27. What do you notice about the fact that if I add 1 and 8, what answer do I get? Yes, I get 9. If I add the 2 and the 7 from the number 27, it also gets the answer as 9. So every answer in the 9 times table will be added up and they will add up to 9. 8 plus 1 is 9, 7 plus 2, 6 plus 3, 5 plus 4, and so on. Then there's a lovely little trick that you can learn um, with your 9 times table. What I'd like to suggest is that you actually draw around your hands, and you have two hands, and you're going to number each finger from 1 to 10. So the left hand will have fingers uh, numbers 1 to 5, and the right hand will have uh, fingers numbered from 6 to 10. And this is a lovely little trick to uh, figure out your 9 times table while you're learning them. So really clever. Look look at the example that they put here. It says 6 multiplied by 9 is 54. So when you're multiplying by 9, you're going to look at the 6, not the 9, at the 6. What are you multiplying 9 by? And it's 6. So in the number six finger you will fold into your palm. Then you look at the left hand and it'll, you'll see that there are five fingers up there, uh, upright, and on your right hand there are four fingers upright. So the answer is 54. Clever. So I'd like you to actually do that at the end of this lesson. Another thing I, I, I find very useful um, is, a, is a game I get my children to play at home and at school, and it's called Stopwatch Tables. Um, each child is given a table sheet like the one you see in front of you. Uh, they cut the tables out. They write the answers on the back. Now make sure that your answers are correct. It's no good. It's no good having incorrect answers. So use a calculator to check that your answers are correct because who wants to learn the incorrect thing? That's a waste of time. Or if you don't have a calculator, just get someone in the house to help check that your answers are correct. When you have got the answers on the back, you're then going to play a self-corrective game called stopwatch table. So you're going to need a an iPad or a phone or any kind of stopwatch that you can time yourself um, and you record how, how quickly you were able to answer each card correctly. Of course, you need to check the answer on the back is the correct one. And then you write down the time it took. What did it take? 30 seconds or a minute or more than a minute? And then you're going to do it again and check yourself. So this is a, a game that you can correct. You don't need anybody to ask you. I actually got um, two of the girls in my class to um, video, well, one of the little girls in my class and her older sister I taught a few years back, and they videoed themselves playing this game. So I'm going to play it for you if I can. Why is it not playing? Uh, let's see. Okay, so I finally figured out how to play this video. So here we go. Let's listen to see what these two girls have got to tell us about this stopwatch tables game.
uh, grade threes, there you have it. Mrs. H is learning as she goes along with this um, distance learning or online learning lessons. So thank you so much for spending this time with me and for allowing me into your home to share uh, my lessons with you. Just a reminder that there is a worksheet uh, that you can upload and print um, and do it uh, based on tables and there's also a worksheet that has the answers on it and you can mark your own work. And another reminder is that uh, to be prepared for your English lesson that follows after the maths lessons. Have a lovely day and goodbye from me.